Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. We're going to continue this uh, Forrester XT Touring build today. And I've been uh, losing sleep about this one, and I'm amped. I want to get this one done and conquered. I love taking uh, parts that are supposed to fit on other vehicles and making them work on vehicles that uh, the manufacturer says, Oh no, no, that's not going to... That's not going to work on there. We can't, uh, we can't have that. So let me show you what we're up against today. So engine makes the most expensive engineered intake for the WRX that has the same two liter direct injection turbo motor. Now, when I had my 2015 Forrester XT, there was another company. It was called like DPT or something. Like. I tried to find that intake again and I, it, they just don't make it anymore. But it was an engineered intake, not as nice as this one, but regardless, we're going to get this thing unboxed and uh, then I'm just going to go through the install process and you can see what it takes to get one of these installed. And I don't give up easily, so if there's like a, you know, bolt hole that doesn't line up to support it or whatever, we'll just make a modification and make it work. Pretty simple stuff. The Subarus are like Legos. Um, I'm sure if any of you have watched the Mighty Car Mods channel, you can see how much uh, difference or no differences there are in the swaps that they do. Like they just completed a uh, STI swap on a Laborg, which was just amazing. I mean, everything was swapped. The motor, the transmission, the interior, the dash, everything. It just all bolts right in, especially on the 2015 and up variety. Uh, the body types are different, but all of the mounts and everything seem to be the same. So in theory, you could turn this into an STI as well. Although I've gone that route before with the 2.5 liter EJ257 motor. Um, they're great and they're powerful, but they're a pain in the neck because uh, a lot of things go wrong with them. These two liters, I've never had any problems with them. But then again, you know, I got rear-ended in my Forester. 30,000 miles into owning it, so um, my experience was limited on them, but from what I did know, um, it worked out just fine. Anyhow, enough of my rambling. Let's get this unboxed, and I'll show you all the parts and pieces that come with it. So, in case you're wondering what the part number is, I will leave a link in the description for this. Um, these normally go for like 700 or 800 bucks. I was able to find this one, I think, for 360. I will leave a link in the description, but as always, if you're watching this video at a later date after it was released, they, the quantity or um, the amount that they have might not even exist anymore. So if you're thinking about getting one of these, now would be a good time to do it when the, uh, the link is still active. I've never installed any engine parts on any of my Subarus, so this should be interesting. I love the fact that it comes with a nice instruction manual and some nice breeze hose clamps. This is going to be sweet. Well, Here's the induction scoop. This thing is like uh, easily twice the size of the uh, OEM one. Got a nice cone filter that comes with it. A bunch of intake tubes. This thing is gonna sound mean. And then the actual air box that goes inside the uh, inside the car there. Alright, I guess the first thing we gotta do is start taking all the OEM stuff off.
All right, guys. Here's where the fitment issue comes in. The air box actually needs to be rotated up because on a Forester, the grill sits up a little bit higher than it does on a WRX, and you have to punch two alternate holes in the intake to get it to sit down in there and the clips to attach to it. The other issue is the scoop for the front mount intercooler has to be uh, pressed up a bit for the hood to close. So I'm going to make those modifications and then uh, I'll show you what I came up with as a solution. But other than that, everything else bolts up just fine. There is really, it's really a non-issue. All the brackets and everything bolt up just fine. So, um, <clears throat> yeah, they say it won't fit. But it's because it hit the it hits these two things and the and the the two holes are drilled in the wrong spot. Not a big deal. We can fix that. Alright guys, I drilled the two holes there in the intake, bolted everything up. The only other issue you're going to have is this little um, mount that goes down there. You won't be able to use it because it, it rotates the intake up a bit and then you'll have to bend this bracket just ever so slightly and everything will go into place just fine. There's really not an issue at all. I didn't have to cut anything. I didn't have to trim anything. This is the only difference you're gonna have is this mount is not holding on to the air box. Do you need it? No, not really. Um, the air box is sitting in there just fine. Um, it's really a, a non-issue. As far as the hood scoop goes, close the hood a couple times on it and it's fine. It doesn't it doesn't really make a difference. Um, if you look at it as you close the hood, you'll see it gets closed off a little bit, but it's not that big of a deal. It's under a little bit of pressure, but it doesn't unalign the hood or anything like that. It's just a little, a little bit bigger than stock. So, um, yeah, pretty stoked that uh, this kit was available and it does in fact work on a 2018 Forster XT Touring. Um, I suppose the other thing you could do if you really wanted to was you could adjust your hood stops up a little bit to uh, gain a little bit of clearance. I mean that's really the only other thing I could think you do. These things are like screws. They You can screw them in and screw them out. If you just back them off a bit like you're taking the screw out, you could probably gain a little bit of clearance. You can only go so far though before they fall out, so just be aware of that. But uh, other than that, everything bolted up just fine and uh, it's good to go. Now I will be giving you guys some updates on this. I am not gonna go for a drive right now and all the oohs and the ahs. They say that this intake gives you eight to 11 horsepower. I, I honestly, I don't believe that because Subaru's intakes are pretty efficient. However, with this design, it may be true. Um, and they say you don't need a tune for it because the ECU will adjust for it automatically. So, um, yeah, we'll take it for a drive. I just know it's gonna be more noisy, so you'll hear intake sounds. Um, I didn't expect to gain any horsepower from this. I just expected a little bit more efficiency. Um, and yeah, so I'll leave a link in the description for this setup. If you guys have a Forester XT and you want to install one of these, uh, wicked looking intakes, you'll be able to do that. But, uh, as far as today's episode goes, that's going to be it. If you guys, uh, like this episode, give me a thumbs up. If you're not subscribed yet, I'd love to have you as a subscriber. You're going to want to stay tuned. We got a little something here under the, uh, workbench that's going in, in the next video. Um, yeah, and I'm actually really excited about that too. There's a story behind it and I'll share that with you in the next video. But other than that, I hope you guys are staying safe, taking care of each other. And as always, I will catch you next time. See you later. Bye-bye.